Okay. All right, folks, let's get going. Um, thanks for coming. Uh, my name is Nancy Goring. I'm a senior analyst at 451 Research, um, and I, I'm in the development and IT ops group, and I specifically focus on monitoring. So I follow APM vendors, infrastructure monitoring, log management, event management, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I thought that I would just um, show you a little bit of research that we have um, about serverless and uh, container adoption. We haven't asked much specifically about microservices, um, but since they're often uh, related, I thought the container research might be interesting to you all as well. So. Um, this is actually kind of interesting. I'll tell you the truth. I put this slide in this deck thinking, oh, like, you know, I should definitely flash a serverless slide. Um, but I find this somewhat unbelievable, um, given that serverless is so relatively new. So, you know, we asked, how would you describe your organization's use of serverless computing? Um, I mean, discovery and evaluation, 45%, I guess that's reasonable. I, I'm sort of doubtful that, you know, 10% of people are, are actually in, in broad implementation of production applications, right? I mean, that's probably, that's pretty unlikely. So this, this happens actually, you know, when we do surveys often of, of really um, sort of new technology is lots of people kind of are all excited about it and um, maybe say they're using it if they're not. And this became particularly sort of stark that maybe this isn't, you know, a reflection of reality when you look at the next slide, which is about container adoption, and it's pretty similar. Um, and you know, I would posit just based on talking to people that there's probably quite a lot more container adoption um, in the world than there is serverless. Um, but again, you know, containers. Uh, you know, one thing that that I have found really interesting about container adoption is that um, you know, typically when new technologies come out and and um, businesses adopt them, there's sort of a pattern, right? It's um, it's start it's very forward-thinking businesses that adopt these new technologies. But what's been interesting with containers is that it's been, the adoption's been very broad. So we've seen all kinds of companies and all kinds of industries and all sizes um, using containers. Um, <clears throat> And actually, I'm going to skip this one just because of time. But I wanted to throw, throw this one up, which, which sort of backs up that point. This is a, like a survey that Datadog does. Um, and, and they found that actually large companies like enterprises are really leading adoption um, of containers, which is it's, it's unusual. You know, when we see a new technology like this emerge, that's not usually um, the, the adoption curve that we see. Um, and, you know, when you're thinking about microservices, I, I just have these two sort of visualizations here. There's this one and this one from Netflix that maybe some of you have seen. Um, and what I think is interesting about this is just th this, these are visualizations that show the connections between micro the microservices that make up the Netflix service. Um, and this is actually from 2014, so it's super old. Um, but the point is just that it's a very, it becomes a very complex environment um, because where once you had this monolithic code base, now you have um, a whole bunch of different services interacting. Um, uh, you know, my perspective is monitoring, and so, you know, that becomes, it, it presents a lot of new challenges when you're trying to monitor because you're trying to understand how these different microservices are related to each other. Um, <clears throat> Uh, and I was just at a conference actually a week ago, and there was an engineer from Uber on stage, and he said that Uber right now has between 2,000 and 3,000 microservices that make up the service. And what was particularly interesting is he said he wasn't being coy by giving that huge range. It was just that they don't bother keeping track. Like, there's no reason to sort of count the microservices that you have, right? Um, I mean, you, you do need to understand the interaction between them, but who cares how many, uh, you know, what sort of the sheer number is. So I, I just thought that was kind of interesting. And then final slide to leave you with, um, again, because I'm, I'm looking at sort of all of this from a monitoring lens, um, and a lot of these businesses use microservices. Um, this is just sort of meant to give you an indication of, of uh, the, the volume of data that these companies, these really large companies, are collecting to try to um, uh, track what they're doing to um, uh, to uh, find out what's going wrong and to quickly, you know, get to the root of problem. But basically, my point is, when you have thousands of microservices, you're actually collecting a lot more metric data um, to do your monitoring, and this is an indication of just how much um, these really big companies collect. So I don't know if the rest of the speakers are going to touch on anything like this, but this is um, stuff that's interesting to me. So I thought I would throw it out there. So um, cool. So that's all I wanted to, to talk about. I just sort of wanted to set the stage here, um, and then I will introduce. Um, 
Bob, our first speaker. So Bob um, Weiss is CTO of the Cloud Native Computing Team at Samsung, and he um, opened the Seattle office um, for this group and um, has a, an interesting background. He was also VP of Engineering at HP's public cloud effort. Um, and so I will let him take it away. <laughs> 